All right, hello everyone. So today I wanna to show you guys how to use a more powerful 3D rendering software known as Fusion 360. Um, it's also made by Autodesk. Uh, some of you actually did use this program for the previous project, but uh, today what we're gonna do is just give you kind of a quick rundown on how it works, um, well, as quick as possible at least, uh, to get you started. So I'm gonna go ahead and just maximize this. All right, so let me uh, first introduce you to the various functions that you see on your screen. Um, starting up at the top left here, you've got your uh, file information, same as you know, typical menu bars at the top here, undo, redo right there, name of the drawing you're using, um, and then below here, you've got uh, your different types of uh, editing. So uh, if you click on it, you'll see model, patch, render, animation, simulation, cam, and drawing. Um, we'll basically be using the model window for most of uh, what we do in this project. If you really get into creative stuff, uh, patch is also something that could be used too. But rendering and animation, simulation, cam drawings are kind of unnecessary for uh, 3D printing. Um, the object that you're going to be making. So we'll just leave it in model. And uh, this panel up here has all of the different types of editing um, tools that you'll be using to, uh, to make your models. Uh, below here is what's referred to as the browser. Um, and the browser is where you, if you were to create multiple parts of an object, they would all be listed as different types of bodies. Um, up at the top here, you've got your original body that has been unsaved, uh, the overall on the project, your units here. As a matter of fact, uh, that's where you want to change by clicking on this. Change it from millimeters to inches just to be easy. Okay. Um, and then you've got uh, origin here, which refers to the uh, plane that you'll be drawing on. We'll go over that more in a minute. Over here on the top, over here on the top right, we've got what's referred to as the view cube. This is the same type of view cube that you uh, see in 123D Design, also in AutoCAD. Um, and it's you can click on it and orbit that way. You can click to go to various views um, quickly. And down here, you've got uh, different types of navigation tools. Now, we won't be using most of these navigation tools because we'll be using just the quick uh, keys on our keyboard and mouse combination or uh, keyboard and um, trackpad combination. Down here is going to be a timeline that indicates everything that you do in the program. That, you, that way you can go back and edit things in different steps and whatnot. All right, so let's just go ahead and show you. Um, I'm going to make a basic shape real quick and then show you the, uh, the modes to kind of look at this object. So I'll go to Create here, and I'm just going to create a primitive box. Um, and then now it asks you what origin view you want to use. I'm going to use the flat uh, surface here. So I'm looking almost at from a top view. Um, then I'll go from my center line by clicking and I'm going to drag it out. Um, type in maybe two for two inches, enter. And then he brings up this box over here. Uh, I've got this at one th three, uh, 30 seconds, so I'm going to make that two as well. So it's just a two inch by two inch, and then I'll make it at height two inches, two inches. And you'll see this box come up whenever you're drawing anything, and that's kind of how you can um, set it up. And then under operation, you've got it as a new body. Bodies usually refer to objects that you're uh, drawing. Component is um, maybe something adjacent to a body that you're going to be drawing. So in this case, we'll just leave it as new body. Okay, okay. And then you'll see over here now it says bodies. You can down click this and body one is the one we're working on. And I can slow click it to change it to box one. And so that pertains to this individual one. So if you've got multiple parts on the same drawing, you can create multiple bodies and have different names for them. And then you can turn them on and off with the light bulb. Okay, so now say I want to navigate this screen. Um, you can click in your center mouse wheel 
to pan around. Um, hit shift and click in your center mouse wheel to pan uh, to orbit. Click in center to pan. Uh, of course, rotate your wheel to zoom in and out. Now, with uh, trackpad, you just um, use your uh, two finger pinch to zoom in and out. You would use shift and uh, your two fingers to orbit, and then just your two fingers left to right to pan. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of how to navigate, and it's much easier to kind of be able to pick your sides by using orbit tool and that kind of thing. So that's the basics for navigation. Um, now, say I wanted to edit a specific side of this or uh, curve these areas, there's all kinds of tools that you can do to modify. Um, say, fillet an edge, rounds an edge, um, chamfering an edge gives it a sharp uh, cut. Shell um, creates like walls, so if I wanted this to be hollow, like it's a box, I can use that. Draft actually. Um, raises and lowers an angle of the side. Scale will change it from uh, one size to another. Say I made this two inches, so I want to make it six inches. You can change the size of it. Combine is to unite a couple of forms. So if you create a bunch of boxes and stack them on top of each other, you can combine them right there. And uh, split face, you can divide a face using a uh, spline or a line tool to do that. Okay. And assemble, you can create joints and stuff like that that are more mechanical. We won't be using assemble much, I'm sure. Construct, um, you can use offset planes. So say I wanted to draw something two inches above this, I can create a plane two inches above it and then draw it down to meet up with this object. Um, and this is kind of the, uh, the, the mode for um, creating objects. Um, in a solid environment. There's also a sculpture environment, which if you click over here, you can create a sculpt environment. And you can create primitive forms like we did before, but these primitive forms, like say a box in the sculpt environment, pick a plane again, pick a start point, and you can type, you know, four, four, And then you get this object, which is um, a mesh primitive. And with this, you've got various planes on it that you can edit uh, individually. So this creates more sculptural objects. Um, and if you right click and hold down the mouse, you can get um, various options here, like say sketch, you can draw lines and stuff on the surfaces. Um, or I can right click and go to edit form here and you can grab one surface and you can pull it out to kind of modify it by clicking on the arrows. Um, you can even specify the distances you're moving things. I can move it that way, this way. So you create more organic shapes that way. Um, another thing you can do is you can set symmetry to this object. So I'm gonna control Z to get it back to the way it was. If I set symmetry, you can do mirror, select face, and then I can select these two sides. And so now when I modify one, by right clicking, go to edit form, if I pull one side in one direction, the other side will go in that same way. See, it makes it symmetrical. So this is pretty powerful stuff. I mean, you can make lots of interesting stuff just using those basic tools. Um, let me go back to my other body here. And I'm going to finish form. Uh, I'll go to my box here. And I'll actually erase the box. I don't want this box either. 
So other things you can do, um, sketching is really powerful as well. You can draw shapes and then use different tools to create um, interesting uh, designs. So I can do line tool and draw a line on that plane and maybe start right here. Say I want to create some kind of shape like that. Um, I can revolve this shape to create a rounded shape, for example. So if I go to modify, uh, go to Oh, there it is, revolve. I can revolve, select the shape, move this over here. Every time you do any of these commands, this window will come up basically asking you what you want it to do. I'll select this, and then it'll say select an axis. I can select that as an axis point. And you see what it did is it revolved all the way around. And you can control how much of it you want it to revolve. So that can kind of create like UFO style shapes and um, you know, anything like car tires, all that kind of stuff is done with the revolve tool. So that's the revolve tool, kind of cool. Of course, uh, other basics, so you can use extrude. So you can select my object and then extrude it just to make it into a uh, solid shape, kind of like that. Um, yeah, so, so those are very powerful sketch your uh, your shape up you can use ellipses circles different um, types of materials draw it, draw everything very two-dimensionally and then make it 3d using your create tool to select what you've sketched um, sweep will create like piping so if you uh, draw a shape and you take it along a path you drop shape and have it tangential to a path and then you can have it sweep along that path so I'll show you how to do that. Let me sketch a circle. And you see there's various kinds of circles. I want to do a center diameter circle here. Uh, draw it out this way. Um, and then I want to create a path to have it go along. So draw a circle, stop sketch and then come over here to sketch again and go to line select the path that you or the uh, the plane you want to draw it on say I want to draw it on that one you can rotate it around draw a line out this way and then hit enter stop sketch um, oops I didn't want to create this segment here just click on it and delete it and then, you know, if you, you can make a meandering path with it, and then you can go to uh, Create, uh, and go to Sweep, select the profile, would be this, and the path would be this. And there you go. But you can, of course, create a much more complicated shape in the back there, and a uh, more complicated path. But uh, just for the sake of showing you, that's all I'm going to do. All right, so that's the basics. Um, it should be enough for you to start playing with it a little bit. Another thing that I really recommend you do is do uh, preliminary sketches for whatever you plan on drawing. Um, and you'll do a top view and a front view and a side view. So three flat views, which are what we call like principal orthographic views. So a top view, um, no perspective, uh, a front view, so it's vertical and then a side view so you've got a section through of it and what you'll do is with those three views you'll insert them um, on each plane so your top view you insert one right there and then you would go to select your image and you bring it in um, and you actually can use that to trace when you're using your sculpting environment or if you're using um, you know still solid editing that kind of thing so uh, 
I'm not going to do that because I don't have a drawing done, but you know, that's something that will definitely help you as creating guidelines. And it's a little bit more free form, so that way you can create more sculptural stuff. Um, so with that said, that should be enough to kind of get you started playing with the program. And uh, once you're done with it, um, I'll show you how to export it. So I'm just going to create a basic... Uh, little line sketch here on the top view and I'll extrude it up and then enter okay so I've got this guy right here which is my body too and you can go to save as STL and so that's what you'll do to create the form that you'll use in MakerBot. So I'm going to select that, and enter, um, go ahead and put it on my desktop, just as untitled. All right. And then for my desktop, I've got an untitled STL somewhere right there. Um, you'll download this MakerBot software. And the MakerBot software, um, I've got a video that is also available to show you how to um, resize everything and make it look a certain way. And you go to add a file, desktop, untitled STL, open it up, there it is. So once you get it kind of in there, you can change the scale of it. Um, and by default this thing is in millimeters but you can do a simple millimeter conversion on uh, on on um, Google just Google millimeters to inches and for example like a hundred millimeters is about I think four inches something like that and you got your shape in there and then you can follow the rest of the other video to, to get it figured out but uh, that's kind of the basics for, for uh, 3D modeling using Fusion 360, which is a pretty powerful tool for creating solid objects and also sculptural, sculptural elements. So um, have fun with it. Um, don't bite off more than you can chew. But uh, at the same time, I'd like to see, uh, see some, some good uh, sculptures, um, whether they be architectural, um, character driven, more organic stuff is tougher, more minimalist stuff is easier, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't uh, play with it for several hours and figure out how to do some pretty cool stuff. All right, thank you very much.